All right, how we doing, Gunny Bedford? Um, so we are continuing with the book Ghost, and we are on chapter nine, which starts on 135 or 36. 136. All right. All right, so uh, world record for cleanest, cleaning the dirtiest car. All right, so page 136. One time in gym class, we had to do this thing for warm up where Mr. Perham made us form two lines facing each other. Everybody had to reach out and hold the hands of the person standing in front of them. For me, that person, of course, stupid Brandon Simmons. His hand felt slimy as if he had just blown his nose into his palms, which he probably did just to be a jerk. After we all were holding hands, Mr. Perham stood in front of the line with his back to us. This is called a trust fall, he said. I'm going to let myself fall backwards, and I'm trusting you all are going to catch me. Like stage diving, Greg Dotson said. Mr. Perham turned around, pretty much. For someone about to be all trusting, he looked kind of worried. Shoot, I was worried for him. I mean, I wouldn't trust somebody like Brandon to catch nobody other than myself or Monique. But Perham turned, turned back around, took a deep breath, and leaned back. That's basically the whole you got to tell a secret to eat thing coach pulled on us was all about. It was like a trust fall with words, a warm up to being defenders. By the end of dinner, it seemed like we were all connected in some strange way that none of us had imagined. And it stayed that way as we came to practice on Monday. All Aaron teased as me, Lou, Patty, and Sonny hung around talking to each other before the stretch. Coach and Witt were on the side of the track, having an extra long conversation with Chris Meyer's father. Look at the newbies. All of a sudden, y'all besties, huh? Let me guess. Patty told you all a secret about how she got a crush on Karan. Karan grinned as the other players laughed. Ain't nobody got a crush on Karan, Patty replied. Dang, Karan, you hear that? Freddie chimed in, yanking the drawstring on his shorts. Yeah, I heard her. What's wrong with me, Patty? Karan asked, fighting back his embarrassment. Sorry, Karan, Patty started, but I don't like boys who jump the gun. Everybody laughed, and Crystal Speed gave Patty a high five, then fired off a few finger guns at Karan. Pew, pew. What are you laughing at, Crystal? No speed? When's the last time you won a race? Karan fired back. The last time I seen your mama, Crystal said. I never ran so fast because I ain't never seen something so ugly. Hey, hey, no need to bring anybody's mom into this, Sonny chimed in, struggling to get his voice to cut through the O's. Oh, yeah, Karam was now feeling big, being laughed at and getting the best of him. How about we talk about yours, newbie? That's enough, Karan. Aaron, who started this whole mess, finally decided to step in, fix it. But it was too late. Now, nah, let's talk about Sonny's mother, Karan insisted, now sizing up Sonny. We all knew he was just joking and that whatever zing – he was about to attempt was going to be silly, but still, this was Sonny. His mother wasn't even alive, and I knew that. And to me, the fa that fact made those jokes off limits. I also knew Sonny wasn't the kind of guy to stand up for himself, so I did. Let's not. I stepped in front of Sonny and looked cold into Karan's eyes. Karan faced me, trying to hold his square, but I could tell instantly he didn't want what I had for him. Y'all see this kid? He said, turning around to the others. Patty and Aaron came up alongside me, joining me in protecting our friend. Yeah, we see him. And since you a cupcake, we suggest you leave him alone, Aaron said, shutting Karan down. Then a hand clap. Slow, one, then another, then another. Coach was standing with Wit, clapping. That was fantastic, he said. Wasn't it, Wit? I thought so, Wit replied, folding her arms across her chest. So many tough guys and girls on this team. Coach stopped himself. Wait, did I just call y'all a team? He started towards us. That's what this is, right? Right? Yes, coach, Aaron said, instantly slipping back into his role as coach's pet. Oh, so only Aaron knows we're a team? We're a team, coach. Yeah, coach, we're a team. We're a team. So then, act like it. You understand me? Each and every one of you. He waved a finger past each one of our faces. Act like it. Matter of fact, learn from the newbies. Defend each other. They ain't your opponents. They're your new family. And as y'all can see, they mean business. I looked at Patty, Lou, and Sonny and tried hard to totally cheese. 
Then I looked at Karan and nodded as coach commanded. Now let's stretch it out. Toe touches, everybody down. After stretching and warm up, the sprinters spent the rest of the practice doing fart licks, which sounded like fart licks. Funniest name ever, fart lick. <laughs> but it has nothing to do with licking farts. It just means you run three minutes at 80% speed and one minute full out. Sounds easy, right? Try doing 10 of them. It's harder than it sounds, way harder, trust me. On the first few, I was able to keep pace with Lou, Mikey, and Aaron. And on the fourth, I decided to prove a point and turn the jets on. We hit the final stretch, the last 100 meters, which was when we were supposed to run full out. And I must have channeled my inner Usain and bolted to the end. Good job, ghost, coach said, whistle still in his mouth, clasping his hands behind his back. I bent over as the other boys crossed the line. They all swung their hands towards me, dapping me as coach continued. You prove that you can get it if you want to. Now get back on the line. But I couldn't move because even though coach had blown the whistle, I'd blown my legs. I can't. I, can't. I panted just loud enough for Aaron to hear me. I dropped to one knee. He grabbed my arm. Yes, you can. Let's do it. You got some more in you. And even though he was the captain and kind of a suck up and he'd gotten smoked by me, a stupid decision that didn't feel nearly as good as I thought it would, I knew he meant that, that I still had more. Needless to say, the rest of practice was rough and ended in me crawling from coach's cab barefoot to the house, through my house, into the bathroom and into the bathtub where I basically let the hot water cook my muscles. And that's how it was every Monday after. Every other day during the week was similar, but with a different routine. Coach had it set up so we always knew what we were going to practice at every day. That way, if he was late or if Coach Witt wasn't around, we could, Aaron could, run the workout for the team. So it went like this. Monday, fart licks, which for me meant an afternoon of running my legs to death and an evening of boiling them back to life. Tuesdays, technique, how to come off the block, elbows in. Open up your stride, head up, back straight, glide, don't wobble. Be a horse, not a penguin. Run through the finish line, not to the finish line. Blah, 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 quack, quack, wah, wah, on the line. Whistle, whistle, over and over and over again. Wednesdays, ladders, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four. Also known as don't eat a big lunch day. Going from four to one was rough, but most of us could crush it, even me. It was heading back up the ladder that was a killer. Go down, throw down. Go up, throw up. The absolute worst. Thursday's long run. Every week, a different routine. Once I was finally able to keep up, it was kind of cool being part of the train of runners zooming down the sidewalk, dodging people and bus stop benches and fire hydrants and trash bags with the motivation mobile trailing behind. My only fear was that one day, Coach Witt would lead us on the wrong route the route that went past the sporting goods store where I was probably a wanted fugitive. Sure, I could just turn my head and shield with my shirt, pretend to wipe sweat, and nobody would know it was me. But the shoes, there was no disguising them. That girl, Tia, would know the sparkle of the silver bullets easy. Luckily, we never went that way. Friday's everybody's favorite day, off, thank God. I'd pretty much gotten used to everything and everybody. Mean Mikey, mumbling stuff, Aaron, the captain of the team, acting like the captain of the team, which at first I wasn't so sure I was going to be okay with. I mean, the guy had a big mouth, like big, big. But he knew how to keep everybody together and motivated, which could get hard when you're on the side puking your guts out. And then there was the four of us, the newbies, our special gang. I gotten used to Patty and Lou snapping on each other and arguing all the time. I'd gotten used to Sonny quoting some spacey book that nobody had ever read or saying something really cool, but it's so out there that you really don't even know why it's cool, but it's cool. As a matter of fact, I think that's the record he holds, the record for saying the coolest, what in the world is he talking about sayings? Definitely, I'd even gotten used to coach. On my back every day about my homework, which I usually got done during the ride home. And whatever I didn't finish, I finished while Ma was zoning into the cheesy movie of the night. Even Coach's stupid whistle and the constant shouting of on the line became as normal as sunflower seeds from Mr. Charles' store. 
I'd gotten used to it all and I was pretty sure that they had all gotten used to me. So everything was cool. Maybe the coolest it had ever been. But Uniform Day changed everything. Uniform Day was the day when Coach was going to give us our jerseys and shorts. He had been talking about this day for two weeks. Going on and on about how Uniform Day was an important because it meant you were officially on the team. It was the last piece to the puzzle. And I wanted that piece. I mean, I had traded running in my jeans for a pair of cutoff scrubs I got from my mom. But that was like running in a pair of drawers. And when I got sweating, man, straight up gross. So uniform sounded amazing. An actual uniform, just like the basketball teams, except for a track team. Yes. Coach showed up at practice carrying the box. He dropped it on the track in front of us as we bent and stretched, getting us ready for the usual Technique Tuesday routine work. I was going to practice coming off the blocks because it was where I needed the most help. It felt weird not to just stand up straight and run when I heard the whistle, but to bend down and press my feet against that metal thing was way weird. Bring it in, coach said. As you all know, our very first meet of the season is this Saturday. You've worked hard these past few weeks and I'm proud of you. So to get you excited about smoking everybody this weekend, I'm gonna give out this year's Defender uniforms. We clapped it up as coach folded the cardboard flaps of the box back. When I call your name, come get your uniform and go put it with your stuff. Then give me some warm-up laps, <clears throat> he said. Then one by one, he called each runner forward. I was standing next to Lou when coach called his name. I gave him a way to go nudge. He grabbed his gear, then jogged back and gave me a five. The jersey, which he held up, was electric blue with gold letters across the front, defenders. Underneath the word was a picture of a fist clenching a wing. It would, be a, it would go perfect with the silver bullets. I liked it. No, I loved it. Sweet, Lou sung out. And that's all till the next installment.